It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Hey, today we're going to talk about Xerox. And folks, I have a way better path for Xerox than getting involved with HP. I think that ship sailed, so stick around for that. But before I get started, I want to do a big shout out to my good friend, Chris Pollock. And I told Chris, hey, can you send me a coffee cup? I'm tired of having that Yeti on my round table here. And he was so nice, he sent me this coffee cup. And folks, here's the reality. This is a nostalgic cup. This cup was issued in 1999. You know, and it was a celebratory cup for their 25th anniversary. Folks, their 25th anniversary was in 1999. Pollock and Pollock's getting ready to turn 50 years old in 2024. So they've been helping dealers for a long time increase their profits around consumables and supplies and parts. So give Chris a call. He can help you out. You know what? He's a great guy. And I look forward to seeing him, by the way, at the BTA meeting. You'll notice I switched my hat out for the BTA hat because, folks, I'm heading to the BTA. I'm heading there tomorrow morning. But let's get on the Sharp Interactive Board. I want to talk to you today about Xerox. You know, about a year and a half ago, I did a video and I said maybe Xerox ought to look at Konica. Remember that video? I want to add to that story, folks, because I think that story just might get some merit. So without any further ado, let's jump on the Sharp Interactive Board. But the first thing, first thing we got to do is remind everybody, Spring Break BTA starts tomorrow. I can't wait to be there. Orlando Disney Yacht Club Resort going to be a lot of fun folks but you know I was thinking about this BTA club they've been around almost a hundred years they're getting ready to celebrate their hundred year pretty soon quote right and I don't ever remember seeing a press release when somebody joined the BTA or I don't remember ever seeing a press release when people sponsor the BTA events and so I thought I would do that really quick here because there's so many companies I mean we'd have to do press releases every single day like you know maybe four or five a day to catch up but you know we got our main sponsors there they are folks Xerox Sharp Brother uh, TAG, T Technology Assurance Group, they're the sponsors of the spring break, the main sponsors. But folks, there's so many of these folks. Could you imagine if we had to do a press release on every single one of these people? I guess the BTA just does remarkable things. They don't need to have hypothetical press releases every time they do something. Good news for them. But ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about our friends over at Xerox, Konica, and I add in a new player, Fujifilm. I want you to think about this scenario. When I talked about Xerox working with Konica Minolta, it was kind of a reaction to the fact that Xerox and Fujifilm were kind of parting ways. Remember that? They were, they, were, they were mad at each other. And Xerox needed an OEM. My thought was, why don't you just go to Konica, tell Konica, hey, you just manufacture the equipment and we'll deliver it to the end user, supply it, and service it. You know, let's have a relationship like we used to have with Fuji. And you know, let's be honest, folks, we've seen Konica sell off some direct operations. I'm still convinced they all go away, it's just a matter where they go. But wouldn't that make sense if Konica and Xerox kind of got together? But then I started thinking, there's been a global pandemic. There's a whole lot of things that have changed over the last two years. What if Fujifilm and Konica Minolta got together themselves? Folks, they have some synergies that are pretty interesting. Fujifilm invested $5 billion in the pharmaceutical industry. They're heavy in the medical industry, right? They got a lot of aspirations around the medical world. Our friends over at Konica, they make industrial medical equipment, right? I mean, they have a biogenetics business. There's some real synergies there. Could they take those two companies, come together with their print deliverable? Think about the addbacks they could add if they came together, some of the redundancies they could get rid of, some of the costs they could save. Does that not make sense? And then let our friends over at Xerox, the largest dealer in the world, sell their product. Folks, if Fuji thinks they're going to come to the United States and start up dealers and start selling direct, they're out of their minds. And if they ever do that, I can't wait to do those videos. We don't need more printers. We don't need more distrib distribution of print equipment in, in the United States, Europe, anywhere in the world. The industry's in decline. We need consolidation. Not only consolidation amongst the OEMs, but consolidations amongst the street distribution as well. You can't continue to go into accounts and just keep giving stuff away, giving stuff away, giving stuff away. That model's breaking. It's changing. A lot of this equipment will be bought through e-commerce platforms in the future. These organizations have to figure out what they're going to do and deliver into the offices. That's why I'm a big proponent of moving upstream with IT services. But the OEMs themselves, you know, when print starts to fade away completely and they position themselves with some of these other products and services like our friends at Konica are doing with medical, their lens division, there's a lot of things that Konica could do besides print. 
Same with our friends over at Fujifilm. So folks, the OEMs are already positioning themselves for a world without print or a whole lot less. Now, they're not going to have a meeting and tell you that. Of course, Rico did one time, and then they had to walk it all back. Remember that nonsense? But the bottom line is, it's just amazing to me that we haven't seen the OEMs come together yet. But we will. And I predict as soon as two of them come together, the rest will follow quickly. Because a lot of people like to follow. They like to see some momentum in the marketplace, and then they follow. And then there's those that lead. And folks... Will it be Fujifilm and Konica that lead the way? But HP going down there and buying Xerox? I don't think that's going to work. I don't think that's going to work. Xerox is doing so many things around the service world. You know, I mean, I don't know if you're paying attention to what they're doing with Care AR, the augmented reality platform. You got Xerox over there now with predictive maintenance platforms for manufacturing facilities. Folks, they're doing a lot of neat stuff. They themselves are positioning themselves for a world where print is so much less relevant. But, first thing we got to do is be able to talk about it. And then the second thing we got to do is there's got to be some damn action. OEMs, please, please, <laughs> for the sake of the industry, start consolidating. Because everybody watching me knows this. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo. I'll see you all on Monday. You might see me down there in Orlando. Have a great weekend.